Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Monday, November 9th, 2020, and I am Nicholas Ratcliffe. Tarleton Sorority Events, Alligator in Texas, 2020 Presidential Election, and more coming up next on Texan TV. In campus news, two sororities at Tarleton State University have recently had kickball tournaments to help raise money for the charities that their organizations have partnered with. AOPI's kickball tournament was held this last Saturday, November 7th, to raise money for the Arthritis Foundation. DFIE's kickball tournament was on Sunday, November 8th, and kicks off their week of events where they raise money for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. This week ends with a pageant which takes place this Thursday, November 12th, and starts at 6 p.m. Tickets are available to all Tarleton students and can be bought from 11 to 1 in the Student Center for $10 apiece. In local news, the Duster community in Comanche County, a 12-foot-long alligator, was found. A family is facing a fine after killing the alligator while fishing. According to state law, Alligators can be killed in Texas by registered hunters during alligator season, which is April to June. An alligator can be killed outside of alligator season if it poses an immediate danger. The family argued their case to local and county officials. It has been decided to waive all fines and fees for the charge. And now, today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. Texas saw a 9% increase in voters this year, going from 50% of registered voters voting to 59%. This voting increase attempted to turn a historically red state blue, but Republicans remained victorious with a 5.5% advantage over Democrats. With Texas remaining red, Democrats failed to gain any congressional seats or make up ground in the state legislature. In national news, after a delayed voting count that lasted three days past November 3rd, Democrat Joe Biden has been projected as the 46th president of the United States. Biden indicated yesterday that he plans to build the government as quickly as possible at the beginning of his administration. He plans to set his main focus on the surging pandemic. In addition, Biden's agency review teams will launch sometimes this week. They will review and collect information from the current staff at each department to help prepare Biden's team for the transition. It's unclear right now whether or not the White House will cooperate with Biden's team. In national news, Tropic Storm Ada has wrecked havoc across Central America and Mexico and is traveling towards the southeastern part of the United States. The storm flooded coastal zones in Cuba where 25,000 people had been evacuated and there were no reported deaths. In Guatemala, 60,000 people had been evacuated where the known death toll is 27 due to a rain field landslide. There are 20 reported deaths in southern Mexico and 21 in Honduras. After being declared a hurricane in Florida, it made landfall in the state late Sunday night. In Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency for eight counties and a flood watch that will be in effect through Tuesday night. For more of today's national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. President-elect Joe Biden attended church Sunday morning in Wilmington, Delaware, after a night of celebrations following his victory in the U.S. election. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump spent the second day in a row playing golf in Virginia. Kenyans turned out to celebrate the U.S. election win of Joe Biden in church and on the streets of former U.S. President Barack Obama's ancestral village of Kogelo in western Kenya. The deacon of the St. Peter's Church sang hymns in support of Biden, thanking God as hundreds of churchgoers cheered on, chanting, Biden, Biden. Tropical Storm Ada swept across eastern Cuba in the early morning hours of Sunday, dumping rain that flooded streets and homes and forced thousands of residents to evacuate. The storm pummeled central Cuba beginning at 4.30 a.m. with a track that will take it along the Cuban coastline. And COVID-19 may have left nativity scene master Jenny de Virgiglio with less business this year. However, the pandemic has given him fresh inspiration for his work. Inside his workshop, draped in period cloaks and flowing silk, his nativity figurines now gaze at the baby Jesus from behind protective masks. Ron Harris, Associated Press, with AP News Minute. 
In sports, Sunday afternoon, the matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers was a game that most experts labeled as a blowout, but was far from it. The Cowboys came in without scoring an offensive touchdown in almost three games. However, that drought was ended when new Dallas Cowboys quarterback Garrett Gilbert threw a 20-yard strike to rookie wide receiver C.D. Lamb to give Dallas an early 10-0 lead. The Cowboys did end up losing that lead late in the fourth quarter when Pittsburgh scored the game-winning touchdown in the final minute. Dallas lost 24-19. to Now for weather, we turn to Matt Reed. Hey Texans, today there's a high of 78 with a low of 61, and tomorrow there's a high of 72 with a low of 39 and a 20% chance of rain. Have a good day, Texans. This has been a production of Texan TV News a product of the Texan News Service from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Watch us live on Ap Apogee Channel 2.1 in the dorms at 12.30 weekdays. If you live off campus, tune in on Northland Cable Channel 9. You can follow the Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website at www.texannews.net for all of your latest local, state, national, and international news. Today's broadcast was produced by the Texan TV staff. Have a wonderful day, Texans.